Saches Ksubas Dav Zayin contains two primary, completely separate sugyas. The first is wrapping up the discussion about whether a first bia, which makes a woman from a basula to a baula, is allowed to be done on Shabbos. The Gemara is now finished discussing the sides of the issue. The Gemara is now going to bring the statements of a number of Amarim and how they held. And the Gemara will have some questions on exactly what some of them held. Then the Gemara will get into the next sugya, which is out of Birchas Chasanim, that's the Sheva Brachos, the seven blessings that are said at the Chuppah. And on the seven days that follow, the Mar is going to discuss who has Shaver Brachos, what type of marriage, and where the Shaver Brachos should be performed. So let's begin the Gemara. The Gemara is first discussing, first beyond Shabbos. So the Gemara says that Rav Ami said was permitted. The Rabbanan asked him, but one second, you need to have a Ksuba. The Ksuba wasn't written yet. You can't do beer without a Ksuba. The Ksuba is a Shtar, it's a contract which is meant to guarantee the woman rights so that she won't be easily divorced. She doesn't feel confident, doesn't fully commit herself to the marriage if she doesn't have those guarantees. So therefore, the bee is forbidden if she's not fully committed. So the Gemara says that in order to solve that problem, Rav Ami would have her hold on to Metaltalin. He would give her certain possessions, certain valuable objects to hold, and that way she has that that she could collect in place of the Ksuba or until she gets an actual written Ksuba after Shabbos. Now, Rav Zvid also said it's permitted to do the first beyond Shabbos. According to some, he actually himself did a first beyond Shabbos. Now, Rav Yehuda, he permitted someone to do a first beyond Yom Tov. So, was that specific? So, the Gemara has a machog between Rav Papi and Rav Papa, what Rava said about this. According to Rav Papi, he would have held that way even on Shabbos. Just happened to be the case that came before him was on Yom Tov. According to Rav Papa, it's only on Yom Tov. So Gemara says, Rav Papi, as Rav Papa, why would you think that Yom Tov is more lenient than Shabbos? You must be applying the principle of Mitoch. The principle of Mitoch says that if you have something which is permitted on Yom Tov for certain circumstances, then it's permitted generally even for broader circumstances. So you must be thinking, since a chabura, since a wound is permitted to be made on Yom Tif, you're allowed to shlecht, to, sh- to slaughter, to do shechita on an animal in order to be able to eat it, for what's called ochal nefesh, to be able to eat the animal, therefore chabura, a wound is permitted. So therefore the chabura, the wound that's permitted as part of the bia, that should also be permitted on Yom Tif. You want to say that that's the heter, and that therefore you don't have a heter on Shabbos, you only have a heter of chabura on Yom Tif because of the principle of mitoch, even though a chabura of bia is not for food. So the problem with that is, is you're saying there's an expanded idea of something's permitted for food, for ochal nefesh, it's also permitted for broader things, so then you should be allowed to burn spices on coals in order to fumigate, to give good perfume scents into your clothing. It's also something you're going to use for your body, and uh, you're allowed to roast things on fires on Yom Tov, so why shouldn't you be allowed to do this as well? You're going to be spicing up things and have the spice put sent into your clothing. Says the Gemara, he responded and he said, no, 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 you're misunderstanding the principle of mitoch as far as Hilchos Yom Tov. The Pesach says, ach asher yeochel ochol nefesh. It has to be something that's kol nefesh. It should be something that's shove lechol nefesh, equal to everybody. Everybody needs to eat. Everybody needs to have a shechita, and everybody needs to do a bia. Therefore, all these things are considered to be shavu l'chol, it's equal to everyone. Perfuming your clothing is only for special highbrow individuals. Um, that's not something that's l'chol nefesh. That's not equal for everybody. So the Gemara says, if that's true, so then, Rav Acha, bring the Rav, Adakash to Rav Ashi, so then you shouldn't be allowed to shech a deer on Yom Tov, because not everybody eats a deer. It's not shavu l'chol Nefesh. Not everybody can eat that. Most people don't have a deer. So he said, no, you had, that is permitted. The way I learn it is not something that is shavel called equal to everybody. It's something that's tzayrech called. It's a need for everybody. Everybody needs to eat. And therefore, the need of eating applies to everyone, and the principle of mitoch applies there as well. Okay. More people who, and how they held on bia, on the first bia on Shabbos. So the Gemara says, Rav Yaakov or Edi said that Rav Yochanan gave a hayra in Sidon that it is forbidden to do a first beyond Shabbos. The Gemara says the word hayra generally refers to it means an instruction. That means he told somebody to do something. It's a term that you use for something that is permitted. It's not something you use for something that's also. How could he give a hayra to do something that's forbidden? That he said that this is forbidden. The Gemara says, no, you could use the term hayra for something that's forbidden. We find that that uh, there was a Mishnah that says that when uh, Heleni Hamalka 
was Mikabel Nezirus. She became a Nezira for seven years. She came to Eretz Yisrael, and Beis Hillel told her to do another seven years, because you have to do seven years in Eretz Yisrael. So that, there the term Hira is used, Hiruha. So that's telling her to do Nezirus. Now Nezirus is, in, is really an Isser. It's saying to abstain, to withhold from wine. And so you see the term Hira could be used for an Iser. Now, another place you find that is a Bryce discussing Hilchas Trefa. That's an injury to an animal that makes it going to die for sure and therefore us to eat, even if it's shakted correctly. And the Bryce there says that Rebbe holds that the spinal cord that's broken in the majority of its width is a Trefa. And Rebbe Yaakov says even if it just has a hole. And that Rebbe, Hoira, he passed in like Rebbe Yaakov. So you see that he went l'chumra, he gave a psak and said that it's also to eat, even according to Rav Yaakov, and you use the term hayra over there. Now, the Gemara just ends, Rav Huna says the halach is not like Rav Yaakov, Rav Nachman Mar Yitzchak says over the entire statement it differently. We say Rav Yaakov here, we're talking about Rav Yaakov, Rav Yidi, who quoted Rav Yechanan, who said that it's also to do the first beyond Shabbos. So he says that as follows, Rav Yavos asked Rav Yishmol ben Yaakov of Tzur, uh, asking Rav Yechanan, Rabbi Shmuel ben Yaakov, that's Rabbi Avo, said over as follows. Rabbi Shmuel ben Yaakov of Tzor asked Rabbi Yechanan of Tzaydan, um, what is the halacha about first beyond Shabbos? And he said that it is Aser. So he didn't, we, we didn't use the word Hayra there. Gemara ends off, finally the halacha is that it is Mutter to do a first Bia on Shabbos. We now move on to the next Suga, which is the concept of Sheva Brachos. There are two aspects to the Sheva Brachos. Brachos. There's the bracha itself, the recital of the seven brachos, and there's also the simcha that you say that we have seven days where the there there is a simcha every day. What there really is is the chasen is being misameach the kala, bringing joy to her to celebrate their marriage. So the Gemara's first sugi is going to be who gets shever brachas, and when we say that somebody gets shever brachas for how long? For one day, just for the wedding. For three days, maybe? For seven days? Is there chiv bracha, but not simcha? Simcha, but not bracha? What is there? Now, are we talking about where you have a man and woman who are neither married before? Where one of them was married before? Or both of them were married before? So the Gemara begins with the Gemara of Chabu, who says, in the name of Huna, in the name of Abba Brazavda, in the name of Rath. A besula, that is a girl who was never married before, and an almana, a woman who was married before, does require bracha. Again, we don't know if this means simcha. It sounds like it just means the bracha. So Gemara asked, but Rav Huna didn't say that. Rav Huna said that Amana does not require a bracha. Rav is not a kasha. It depends who she's marrying. If an Amana is marrying a bachar, that's a man who was never married before, then a uh, sheva brachas is required. If it's an almana and an almana, that's who are both married before, sheva brachas is not required. So therefore, we come out so far. What is Rav Huna's opinion? If either one of them has been married before, if either or one of them has never been married before, Sheva Brachas is fully required. If both were married previously, then there is no Sheva Brachas. So the Gemara says, but that's not true either. We have a uh, Alman who married an Almana. They were both married before, and Rav Nachman says that uh, that Huna Bar Nassan said to me, we learned in a Brisa, that the source for the whole concept of Sheva Brachas is from the marriage of Voaz to Rus, because it says, And uh, that what happened over there was Sheva Brachas took place, and over there, Boaz and Rus were both married before. So obviously, Sheva Brachas do exist even if they were both married before. So the Imara says, Okay, there's two different things over here. Now we're going to distinguish. Between seven days and one day. So the Gemara says, there by Boaz, I was talking about one day. One day is required. I'm talking about seven days. Seven days is not required if uh, both the Chasen and the Kala were married before. So now the Gemara says, I have a Brisa that doesn't fit with either of these. So Brisa says that Chachamim made a special the Kana for Benos Yisrael, that they should have three days of Simcha. So three days of Simcha, what are we referring to? If one of them was not married before, you need seven days, we said. If both of them were married before, you only need one day. So where do you have three days? So the Gemara says uh, two answers to this. Um, first of all, it could be referring to where they were married before 
and it's talking about bracha is one day, but simcha is three days. Or it could be talking about where neither where one of them at least was not married before, and therefore you have to have seven days of bracha, but you only need three days of simcha. So at this point, we're differentiating between bracha and simcha, and we're going to say three days is one or the other. Either you're referring to where they require seven days of bracha and only three days of simcha, or you're referring to where they have only one day of bracha and three days of simcha. So either way, we're saying three days of simcha here. Now the Gemara asks a kasha of a b'risa that says that Sheva Brachos is as follows. For a b'sula, that's a girl who was never married before, seven. And for an almana who was married before, it's one. And it does not distinguish between who the almana is marrying. So that would imply that even if she's marrying a man who was never married before, she still only gets one day of Sheva Brachos. So the Gemara says, no, we're talking about an al- almana to an almana where they were both married before. If she would be marrying a bachar who was never married before, she would get Sheva Brachos. So the Gemara says, well, then the Brasa should say so, which should say that either the Basula or the Bachar are entitled to Shaver Brachas if either one was never married before. So the Gemara says, no, the Brasa's strategy is as follows. It's teaching you the minimums. It's teaching you something which is across the board. A Basula never gets less than seven days across the board. An Amana never gets less than one day. That's what we're trying to say. An Amana could get more, but we're talking about the din of the Amana. She has a minimum of seven day, of one day of Shaver Brachas. Now the Gemara returns to focus on the drasha we said earlier, how do we know the halacha of birchas chasanim? So the Gemara is going to find places where we need a minion at a wedding. The minion for the wedding is to establish the concept of birchas chasanim, to be able to say the shever brachas, which has to be said with a minion. So what's the source? We already quoted one, the Gemara is not going to bring another one. So the first one we said, this is Rav Nachman, it says in the name of Hunabar Nasan, in the marriage of Boaz and Ros, it says, Vika chasar anoshim izikni here, they took ten elders of the city, v'yom or shuvupo, they said, sit down here, v'yishevu, and they sat. What's the ten people for? It's for Shevar Brachas. Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Avo has a different source. It's a passage in Tehillim that says, Hashem Yisrael. In congregations, bless Hashem. In the Mikori, so on the fountain of Yisrael. So Mikori says, refers to a marriage. And it says, Bimakela, you have to have a kahal. Now, kahal is linked to Ada. It says, Hakela, so Ada. Ada has to be a minion because the Maraglim that were that spoke bad against Eretz Yisrael, which was only 10 people, they were called uh, Eida Haro Hazais. So Eida is 10, Kal has the same as Eida, so Kal here has to be 10. It says Makar, so it's talking about a wedding, so it's got to be a Kal at a Makar, you have to have 10 people at a wedding. And that's for Shaver Brachos. Now the Gemara says, what does each Amar do with the Pasuk brought by the other one? So what does Rav Nachman do with Rabbi Avo's Pasuk of Hashem Yimekar Yisrael? So Gemara says, that is used as Rabbi Meir says in a Brisa. How do you know that a a fetus inside its mother's womb still said Shira at Kriyas Yamsov. It says, Bimakelois, Barcho Elikim, Mi Makar Yisrael, that in the congregation they blessed Hashem Mi Makar from the fountain of Yisrael, that's from inside the womb. Now, Rabbi uh, Avo says, then it should have said Mi Beten. If that's what it meant, it should have said Mi Beten. Yisrael, what's Makar? Makar means on, it's talking about a Makar, which is a fountain, that's talking about a wedding. Now, Rabbi Avo, what is he going to do with Rav Nachman's Pasuk about Boaz and Rus? So he says there the minion was not in order to say Sheva Brachos. The minion was in order to establish the halacha of Amayni Vlei Amaynis Me'avi Vlei Me'avis. Rus was a Me'avis. She was from Moab. The Torah says not to marry people from Moab. How is Boaz allowed to marry her? Because it's only males from Moab that's us and not females. And that was a drasha that had to be publicized at the time. It wasn't well known. So they got the tens of Canaan together to sit down and make this drasha to establish that this is the halacha. So the Gemara says the proof is in the fact that you have to have Zikanim. If you're only to be a minion, why does it say Zikanim? Why do you need to have the elders there? So the other one uh, responds and he says, if it was just for a drasha, why do you need a minion? You don't need a minion for a drasha, you need Zikanim. And they have to have the wisdom to establish a drasha, but you don't need to have a minion. So Gemara says you do, and the reason is that in order to be publicized, everyone needs to be aware of this halacha, like Shmuel said, Rav Chana Bagdasar, Rav Chana, that's Rav Chana of Baghdad, go and bring me ten people, and I'll say in front of them halacha that somebody who is mezak is something, that is, he transfers possession to an uber, to an unborn fetus, Kana, that works, you are allowed to do that, and it belongs to the Ubar. And the Gemara just notes that it's not Allah. The Allah said it's not Kana. Next, the Gemara discusses the bracha on an Arusa, on an Arisen. As we know, there are two stages to a marriage. There's Arisen, which is the engagement, that's when the ring is given. 
And that's when the woman becomes us to everyone else in the world, but not yet permitted to her husband. They're only considered to be engaged, not fully married. And then there's Nisuin, which is when he takes her into the chuppah, and there she becomes murta to him. In our days, we do these two things together at the wedding, but in the days of Chazal, they were separated by many months. So the Gemara says that the Rabbanon taught in a b'risa, that Berchus Chasanim is only at the Nisuin, only at the base Chasanim, only in the wedding call where they did the actual Nisuin. If you just says that even by Erisin, by Erisin they also do bracha. So Abaye says, and he was referring to the region of Yehuda, because in the region of Yehuda they allowed Yichud between an Aros and an Arusa, between the two engaged people. They allowed them to be Misyachid, and you're not allowed to have Yichud without having said the Bracha first. If you didn't do Bracha, there's an Isra Yichud like Anida, and because they were going to allow Yichud in Yehuda, they did not allow Yichud in the Galil, but they allowed it in Yehuda, therefore they had to do Berchas. Uh, chasanim at the Arison. Now, says the Gemara, not really. There's a different brisa that says that there's two different brachas. Brachas Chasanim is said at the Chuppah, and there's something else called Brachas Arison that said at the Arison. It's a different brachas called Brachas Arison. What's Brachas Arison? So, Mark quotes Ravin by Rav Ada and Rabba by Rav Ada. They both said in the name of Yehuda. The bracha says as follows: Bracha to Hashem, the King of Melech Elam, Mashiach Kedushanu, b'Mitzvah of Itzivanu al Ha'aroyos, commanded us on Isurei Erba, v'Asur Lano es Arusos, forbade to us the Arusa, v'Hitur Lano es Anesuos, and He permitted the Nesuos the Chupa v'Kedushin through doing Chupa and Kedushin. Now, is there a concluding phrase? So Rav Acha, son of Rava, said there is a concluding phrase. According to Rav Yehuda, there is a concluding phrase: Bracha to Hashem, Mekadosh Yisrael, the Chupa v'Kedushin. And others did not conclude. Uh, the, the first version that we said did not conclude with anything. It just stopped there. So what's that machokas about? So machokas is, what do we view Birchas Erisen as? Is it is a bracha for Hana? Is it a bracha for Shevach? Is it a bracha for Mitzvah? If so, so then like every bracha on fruit or a bracha on a mitzvah, there's just a bracha without a concluding bracha tasha. According to the one who did conclude, he viewed it as Kiddush. You're being Mekadesh to the Isha, just like you're being Mekadesh to Shabbos. Kiddush and Shabbos and on Yantiv does have a concluding phrase, Baruch Atah Hashem, Mekadesh to Shabbos, or Mekadesh to Shabbos, so you're also going to have a concluding phrase, Mekadesh Yisrael Yidei Chuppah, the Kiddushin.